All right, so you finally made that decision to buy a gun. And obviously in buying that gun, you need to go to a gun store. And in all my years of shooting video for the best defense and other training videos, I've never ever once taken you, a student, to the gun store and shown you the dynamics of, hey, how we're gonna go about picking that first gun. And what I often find is students show up to my classes with the wrong gun and the wrong gear. And it's typically because they've been given the wrong advice. So the whole goal today in our fun little field trip is to take you to 2A, which is a local gun store in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and show you some of the principles behind picking your first gun. Some of them are going to surprise you. Some of them may seem like common sense, but the point is when we're done, you're going to know how to approach this environment that can be very intimidating for most people. Let's go have some fun. So you made it to the gun store. This is where typically things start to go right or wrong. And once we get in there, you're gonna see there are literally hundreds of gun selections. There's all kinds of holsters. There's all this defensive ammunition. What to pick? Well, that's what's coming up next. Okay, so here we are at 2A or at your gun store, wherever you're going to. And before we get into gun selection, there are some things I need to talk to you about. Now, here's the deal. I'm not saying that the majority of gun store employees at major manufacturers or retailers are not knowledgeable or bad. But what I'm gonna tell you is, one of the things that I found across the board with my students is that when they show up with a piece of gear or a gun that's really not effective for them, oftentimes they told me, Hey, when I asked them, hey, why'd you buy this or that? Because the guy at the gun store told me to, okay? So when you make your decision, a few things. Number one, if you're gonna be asking help from the gun store employee or retailer employee, you've gotta make sure they're a valid subject matter expert. What that means is try to find one that's a shooter. Find one that carries a handgun defensively and has a concealed care permit. Find one that's a, that's a competitor. Find a person that's a real, you know, gun-loving shooter that practices one, two, three, or four times a week. Because if you find someone like that, they're going to be more than knowledgeable enough to give you the advice you need. And last but not least, once you get that advice, make sure you bounce it off a good store. An example is my good friend that happened to walk by, Jeff Portman, is the assistant manager here at 2A. This guy is a subject matter expert. Jeff, I'm going to get some guns out here in a second. Ask Ames, man. Find a subject matter expert. You can't just trust anyone you talk to at the counter. Okay, let's talk about guns. Okay. Okay, so don't tell anybody, but they gave me the key to the cabinet. So cool thing here, I'm going to show you some guns. And what I want to get across is some principles behind your gun selection. Number one rule, try before you buy. And what that means is here at 2A they have a rental counter. So that means all of these guns that they have for sale you can also rent and shoot. Try it before you buy it, if at all possible. That's number one. Number two, when you're selecting that handgun for the first time, don't necessarily buy the one that's the most comfortable. And I get students all the time that will show up and say, hey, and I'll say, why'd you pick that gun? They say, Mike, because it was really comfortable in my hand. Remember, you're not gonna have the handgun in your hand for comfort purposes. You're gonna have it in your hand for defensive purposes. And once you get a little bit more knowledgeable and spend some time doing dry fire and live fire training drills that are in the other modules of instruction, your, your opinion on the gun may change. So don't buy a gun before you try it and don't buy a gun just because it's comfortable, okay? So let me talk to you about families of guns. And what I mean by a family of gun here is, this is the, uh, the Glock family of guns, okay? And I'm gonna strongly recommend that when you select your defensive firearm, you select a family of guns or one that is offered on a family of guns type system. What I mean by that is, if you take a quick look, and if you look down this rack, I've got, of course, the Glock 22. It's a full-size handgun, 40 caliber Smith & Wesson. Right below it is the Glock 35, which is another 40 caliber uh, Smith & Wesson caliber. But notice the, the additional barrel light. Now, for example, these two guns, this is a full-size carry gun you'll find with most police officers. That's the one they're going to be carrying. This one may be carried by law enforcement, but this one is actually was designed and is very, very usable in the practical shooting circuit. And then right below that, we have a Glock 27. Now the Glock 27, of, of course, is 40 caliber as well. And if you look at the difference between the three handguns, the main difference there is barrel and grip length. Okay, so let me tell you about the real benefit of a family of handguns. Let's say I, I could have the Glock 22 or, or 35, for example, with a weapon-mounted light in my quick access safe at home. That's my home defense handgun. 
let's say I carry the Glock 26 as my standard carry gun as a bigger, larger frame male. And let's say my fiance or wife carries the smaller 380 caliber new model Glock 42 or 43. Of course, the 43 is going to be a 9 millimeter because it's, it's thinner, it's lighter weight, it's easier for her to carry. The advantage there is every one of those handgun handguns basically feels and operates the same way. So whether I'm grabbing the handgun, you know, my wife is grabbing the handgun, our older teenage son that's, that's had some training on the range grabs the handgun, they're all going to be the same type of firearm, okay? And another benefit, let me open up this other case for you here, is with all of these handguns, the Glock line of fa family of handguns, or when I show you here in a second, the M&P, we can buy 22 conversion kits that will allow us to train a lot more for a lot cheaper. Now I know 22 ammo is expensive these days, but it's coming down. I think it's going to go back to where it was, and this is a really great addition as far as a training solution. Now I showed you the other two Glocks. I want to really quickly show you the third one here. Now this is the third one I referred to. Uh, this is a Glock 42. This this handgun is actually 380 in caliber. Um, the other two or three that I referred to were 40 caliber, and that brings me to caliber. Number one. Well, when you're selecting your defensive handgun, you're going to want to figure out what caliber you're going to carry. Here's the deal. Without you getting overly drawn into the weeds on caliber, 45 bullet types, etc., my personal recommendation, my carry firearm is 9mm. I keep it simple. I carry high-quality bonded ammunition that will penetrate the depth I need. Um, this particular handgun, smaller, lightweight, um, very, very thin, very easy to carry, might be a selection for you, but remember it's going to be 380 caliber, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but this is on the very low end of carry calibers. This is the one that I would recommend only if you need a much smaller, lightweight firearm to carry. Now Glock, for example, is actually coming out with a, a single stack handgun sometime in the very near future. What I mean by single stack is the magazines carry a single stack of bullets versus a high cap, and I'll show you a high cap magazine here in a second, which carry a double stack of bullets in the magazine itself. Okay, so another great carry example right there, small Glock 42. Okay, so that's the Glock family of handguns, and I'm trying to sell you on the fact that whichever model you pick, whether it's the Glock family or um, the Ruger family or the M&P family, which I'll show you on the other side, the bottom line is whichever family it is, if you stick to a system of handguns that's very much the same, then under stress, after the bump of the night, when you pick it up, everyone is going to be able to operate that handgun effectively. Okay, let's talk about triggers very, very quickly. Now, the trigger on the first gun that I showed you is what's called a striker-fired trigger. You're going to have single-action triggers, what's called striker-fired triggers, which feel very similar to single-action, double-action triggers. So there's some handguns that have a double-action first pull and a double-action all-the-time pull. For example, a revolver would have a double action all the time pull if it's a double action revolver meant to be carried that way. Um, this particular handgun is actually a Ruger LC9, okay, got a clear handgun there. And of course this, if you can see with this long trigger, and you can see how far the trigger sets out there, is a double action automatic, okay. So every, so every time you fire that particular round, you're going to fire the shot with double action. And every time that slide cycles, you're going to have to pull through that double action trigger pull. But what are the pros and cons of a double action trigger? Um, cons, we'll start out with cons. Cons is anytime you pull a longer, heavier trigger, the gun is going to be harder to shoot. Um, now that doesn't mean you can't train around that and you can't be very successful, but it's going to be harder to shoot, especially when we have to shoot it with our non-dominant hand. Okay, So when we're looking at a double action trigger, that's going to be the con. A pro to this type of handgun is it's got a very um, deliberate trigger pull to it. So for example, if you were carrying this uh, in a pocket holster or a purse or in any situation where there may be other items uh, that might get into the trigger guard potentially or you're uh, not as confident or comfortable with a single action or striker fire trigger, a double action trigger may give you some additional confidence. But I'm going to tell you um, that's not something necessarily that I would want you to rely on is, hey, I'm going to carry a double action gun just so in case I make a mistake and don't train with it, I can bump the trigger and nothing's going to happen. Not a good solution. Um, so that's the Ruger line of pistols, of course. And uh, follow me around here. Let's talk about another family of pistols, actually two families that I'm, I'm really a big proponent of. Number one, my personal carry gun is the M&P Shield. I'm wearing one right now in an inside the waistband holster. 
Okay, so when I'm talking about this line of guns, once again, if you look at it, this is a family of guns. This is the Smith & Wesson M&P or M&P Shield family of guns. And if you look at, you know, we have, you know, the full-size model, and this obviously has a little barrel attachment on there, but the full-size uh, model. And then if you look at, this is the core model, and then down to the Pro, and notice they're, they're all the same length except for the barrel length. So the grip length is the same but the barrel length is slightly longer. And then farther down the case, of course, then we get into the C models, the compact models. And this is actually the M&P 9C, a really, really good carry gun, one of my favorite carry guns of all time. So what's the difference once again? Now, if we take that M&P 9C and we line it up against, for example, the Pro model, you're going to find that the trigger position, the distance from the back of the grip to the trigger is all the same, the controls are all in the same spot, the mag release is in the same spot, so everything is the same. So, God forbid someone kicks the door in the middle of the night and you and your family members have different models that you carry. Maybe one set up as a home defense model, one as a carry model, one as a smaller carry model that your wife or girlfriend carries, they're going to feel the same in your hand, the trigger's going to feel the same, and you're going to be able to manipulate and operate those guns the same. That's the advantage of a family of pistols, okay? So, the last family of pistol that I want to refer to you real quick, if you look over here, and I won't even open the case, um, this is the XDM model of our family of pistols. You know, if you look at the top, once again, longer barrel length, this is the 5.25, and on down uh, the case, on the bottom, you can see the single stack XDS model, and they have two or three different calibers and two or three different variants and colors. Of course, this is the single stack, thinner, lighter weight, maybe your full-time everyday carry type handgun. And then, of course, the midsize is the 4.5 um, model of the XDM. Once again, the only difference here is, you know, typically the grip length and the barrel length. And the, the handgun ultimately you're going to select is the one that you can effectively carry concealed that's as big and as easy to shoot as possible. So I'm going to select the one that works the best for me. Now here's the deal. I've talked about the Glock, the M&P, the Ruger, and the XDM line. That doesn't mean there are not other good lines of pistols. I just, I, I don't have the time in this particular video to cover every handgun out there. I would tell you though, that if you stick to a premium line of handguns, Glock, Smith & Wesson, XDM, Ruger, et cetera, et cetera, you're going to be in a win-win situation. You're not going to be in a situation where you bought a gun that's not an effective gun, okay? So I've talked about families of pistols, barrel lengths, trigger, some of the thought process behind your selection. Let's look at one of the coolest handguns around. Of course, this is a, back in the day, a man's handgun. Ladies, don't take that the wrong way. Let's talk about that one real quick and then one of the fallacies of selecting handguns. Okay. So this is where the cool guys hang out. And why do they hang out in here? Because this is where the 1911s are, okay? And if you talk to anybody that's carried a handgun for any length of time, or anybody that's been around, one of the things that you're gonna hear or you're gonna read is that if you're gonna carry a handgun, it's got to be a 1911 and it's got to be a 45 ACP. Now, here's the deal. If you're carrying a 1911 and it is a 45 ACP, my hat is off to you. That's a great choice, as long as your handgun runs all of the time. Now there are some instructors out there and there's some people that will say, hey, you know, 1911, for example, this is a Kimber 1911, I'm going to, you know, poo-poo on 1911 because they don't run, they're not effective, et cetera, et cetera. I'm going to tell you, personally, I have two or three 1911s, uh, primarily in 40 and 9mm calibers, that are my competitive guns that are also set up and I have some carry models that run and run and run and run and run. For example, I have two Rock Island Armory 9mm, I have one compact and full-size 9mm handguns that in training I've shot well over 15,000 rounds with each and probably closer to 20,000 rounds and with the compact gun maybe one malfunction. So don't let anyone tell you that there are 1911s out there that don't run. But I will tell you that this system of handgun is a little bit more complex than the striker fired handguns that we looked at earlier. First of all, let's clear this out, we've got a clear handgun here. The first thing that's different about a 1911 style handgun, and there are, there are some other models that mimic this, is there's actually a manual safety on this handgun. Now, if you decide in your selection process you're going to carry a handgun with a manual safety, the one rule there is you've got to be able to operate the manual safety and you've got to train with it. A little uh, war store for you, I had a student very recently show up in class and they had a manual safety on the handgun and during the training drills this individual couldn't fire the handgun you know about two out of three of the drills and I went over and, and talked to her and said hey what's the problem with your handgun and she said well, I, I can't I can't actually manipulate the safety and I said wow well she had arthritis in her thumb, thumb so she had some problems and the, of course my follow-up question was well why did you select that handgun 
And her answer was, well, that's because that's the one the guy at the gun store told me to select. Okay, so uh, that gun store guy missed that one in a very big way. She had a very nice, very expensive 1911 style handgun that I would have loved to have carried, but wasn't effective for her. Okay, so if you decide to go with a 1911, once again, we've got the large full size 1911. These are all Kimbers. They're a bunch of variety. There's a Springfield is a great line of pistol. Kimber is a great line of pistol. Rock on Armor is the one that I personally own and shoot the most of nowadays as a sponsor of mine. They run and run and run and run and good pistols. Although I will tell you that as a, a brand new gun owner, I'm not necessarily going to lead you down the path of buying a 1911. Great guns. If you go with that, make sure you buy one that runs. It's got to run all the time. Remember, it's defensive use purpose, right? All right. My pet peeve. This is my number one pet peeve. When I run into people, show up in class, and oftentimes this is going to be a female shooter, and she'll show up, um, let's grab this one here, she'll show up in class with the revolver that looks something like this, so we've got a clear and safe revolver. Smith & Wesson, Eric revolver, uh, a Ruger revolver of some variety, or Taurus revolver, whatever revolver. And I asked that individual, why are you carrying a revolver? And it's not because they prefer the revolver or they prefer the reliability or this or that. It's simply because their husband or their boyfriend or their fiance or whoever told them, carry a revolver because they're very simple, easy to use, and I don't trust you enough to train with one, to train with a handgun or semi-automatic. I think that's the wrong answer. And the reason why that's the wrong answer is typically in that particular case, I'll say, okay, student X, Y, or Z, Let's take your revolver, let's load it up, I'm going to set a target about five yards away, I'm going to take your handgun, I'm going to put it in your support hand or your weak hand, oh, we don't have a weak hand, and I'm going to have you fire five shots at the target, one, two, three, four, five. And then we're going to go down and check those hits with one hand only. Now this is a situation where they had to fire the shots in defensive use with one hand only. Five shots. How many hits do you think they usually get? Maybe two. So out of those five shots, three of the other bullets went into Granny Smith or their grandchildren or someone else or into the unknown. The bottom line is if you are carrying a handgun and you're not willing to train enough to learn how to operate a semi-automatic firearm, a high quality semi-automatic firearm, you shouldn't be carrying a handgun. Think about that for a second. Now, if you decide, hey, I'm going to carry a revolver because a revolver is very lightweight, uh, because this hammerless design, I can stick it in my pocket, it's very efficient for me to carry in my dress clothes, and I'm going to train with it a bunch, more power to you. It's a great carry gun. I carried a gun like this in my back pocket, and on a vest holster when I was a police officer for many years, it was my backup gun. I relied on it to save my life, okay? It was a good handgun to carry. I would have used it if I needed to use it, but you've got to train with it. Remember, when we're talking about double action trigger pull, that stiff, hard double action trigger pull is going to make it harder to hit the target. It's also going to be harder to control the recoil with these types of handguns. So, as a revolver, generally speaking, while they're a really, really great system to carry, once again, they're not going to be my primary recommendation for you as a carry gun unless you meet those other requirements. You know, it has to be a revolver because of the lightweight of the position you're carrying, and you plan to train with it a lot. But if you currently carry a revolver because someone told you that's the only thing that you were smart enough or trained enough to operate, Shame on them and shame on you. You should train more with your handgun. So now you know my pet peeve. Let's shut this case up. Okay, so you've done your research. We talked about striker-fired handguns, double-action handguns, families of handguns, and now you know the model you think you want to carry. My next tip for you is find a place like 2A here that has a really robust rental program. If you look inside the counter here, they literally have every handgun for sale and for rent at the same time. So when I'm like, hey, I'm going to pick this handgun as my defensive handgun, now it's time to rent it and actually shoot it. So, Jeff, can I shoot that one right there? Yes, sir. Let me shoot that SIG. Thank you, sir. We'll You're see welcome. you on the range. Mm -hmm. All right, so one of the things about shooting, and now of course I've got my handgun in my bag, I'm about to go out and test fire it, but you're gonna find in the gun shop that you go to that there are literally probably hundreds of different holster and mag pouch selections that you can make. Now here are some keys for you, some key tips. Number one, you're probably not ready to select a holster and a mag pouch. So my recommendation for you is if you've bought your handgun after you've tested it, 
is not to run out and just buy a holster and a mag pouch. Remember, the holster and mag pouch that you're going to be utilizing is not simply just to carry it on the range. It's eventually going to be your carry system on your belt or in your purse or wherever else. So you're going to want to do some additional research. Now, watch the holster selection video in my series. That's going to give you some additional tips. And secondly, when you're training, the first three or four drills in my program don't require a holster. I could take the gun in a bag just like this or in my shooting bag with plenty of ammunition and I could practice those drills and when I'm done I could reholster the handgun in the bag. Remember, this is selection criteria. This is going through the selection process. We haven't picked the gun. We're not carrying it as of yet. But once we get in here, you're going to see all kinds of different holsters from the Bladetech Kydex type holsters to you know, leather holsters made by Gallico to Safarland holsters that are a laminate, heavy duty holster. Literally, there are hundreds of different options. But before you get into the individual models, we've got to talk about principles, i.e., where are you going to carry and how are you going to carry? And that, my friend, will come in another video. Hey, I hope you enjoyed the trip to the gun store as much as I have. And I want to summarize with a few key points for you, some takeaways for you, okay? Number one, Try before you buy, okay? Try before you buy. Find a gun store that allows you to rent a firearm because we're talking about defending your life with that tool. Number two, don't pick a handgun just because it's comfortable to you. Remember, at your stage as a newer shooter, you're getting into this, you're learning things. You don't know what you don't know. So don't just buy something because it's comfortable. Buy something that will meet the requirements that we discuss in this video. Last but not least, you're going to need a lot of advice along the way. So when you come to a gun store like this, make sure you find a gun store like 2A or something similar that has employees that have real knowledge about what you're trying to find out about and purchase, okay? Their knowledge is going to be the key to your success. So make sure you find the right employee to talk to. Folks, there's a long road ahead, a lot more to teach you. Thanks for joining me today. Until then, train hard.